Lately, I've run into some particularly obtuse and arrogant fundies who insist that it is indeed possible to disprove the existence of something that does not exist, and that the burden of proof is therefore upon the disbeliever, who must then either disprove God's existence or accept that he does exist. At this point in the conversation, I usually ask the believer to disprove the existence of all the other gods people worship, like Zoroaster or Vishnu or even the flying spaghetti monster. Usually they sidestep the question or change the subject. It is strictly philosophically impossible to disprove the existence of anything, but there is one way in which it can be shown that something's existence is so unlikely as to be virtually impossible. A paradox is something that has two or more qualities that stand in contradiction to one another. For instance, a square with five sides. Now, I can't disprove God's existence any more than anyone else can disprove the existence of the flying spaghetti monster, should I ever find a theist brazen enough to try. But what I can do is explain how the concept of God, as described in Western monotheism, represents several paradoxes, and that the existence of God, as he is thusly described, is highly unlikely to me. First, we have the concept of omnipotence. God is described as all-powerful. This brings to mind the ancient philosophical question of, can God make a rock so heavy even he can't lift it? If he can make such a rock, then that would imply a limit to his power as evidenced by his inability to lift it. If he cannot make such a rock, then that too would imply a limit to his power. Bearing this in mind, can such a thing as omnipotence even be? Another good example is to look to Genesis. God made the heavens and the earth from nothing. He simply willed them into existence out of nothing. He then made Adam from earth or clay. Did God run out of nothing? He then made Eve from Adam's rib. Did God run out of dirt? Why would an all-powerful God require materials to create something when the same story clearly states that he's capable of conjuring things out of nothing by will alone? Secondly, there's the concept of omniscience. God is described as knowing all things, past, present, and future. If that is indeed true, then what good is it to evangelize to me when whether or not I will adopt a faith and where I'll end up after I die have already been determined? Could I even choose to adopt a faith if I wanted to, if indeed my future is set? What good then are prayers? If a loved one is ill and you pray for their recovery, doesn't God already know whether or not your loved one will get better? Will praying change God's mind and he'll decide to make the ill person better when he wasn't going to before? If the future can indeed be influenced by prayers, then how can anyone say that God can see the future when the future can be changed by the things that we do in the present? If the future cannot be changed, then what's the point of prayers, or churches, or even faith itself, since our ultimate destiny is already decided for us. Thirdly, there's the concept of omnibenevolence. God is described as being infinitely loving. I have a difficult time believing in a loving God who also sends his children into eternal torment. Let us forget about all the finer points of dogma and concentrate on what, for me, constitutes the biggest contradiction of all. A loving God who inflicts infinite punishment for finite crimes. Human beings are limited in both power and existence. We only live for so long, and we can only do so much. I cannot reconcile the concept of someone who loves me, and yet will inflict tortures on me that are infinitely painful for an infinite period of time simply for what I do or what I fail to do, with my limited human faculties in my limited human lifetime. Asking me to believe in a loving God who doles out infinite punishments for finite crimes is like asking me to believe in a square with five sides. It's a contradiction of Orwellian proportions. And finally, there's the concept of God as being infinite and perfect. God is described as existing independently of our universe. God existed first, God existed eternally, when there was nothing, and then he created all of existence as we perceive it. 
He then created humankind with the command that we worship him and give him thanks. Why would a perfect and infinite being do any of this? A perfect being is complete in and of itself. It would lack nothing, it would need nothing, and it would desire nothing. Why would a complete being create something it didn't need? Why would a perfect being want to be worshipped? Desire is a human concept, a, a recognition of how we are incomplete and imperfect. Once again, this re represents a contradiction, which is what you will always get when you try to combine a superhuman concept such as perfection with a human concept such as desire. The two are mutually exclusive and cannot coexist any more than you could flip a coin and get heads and tails at the same time. None of these arguments prove to me that God doesn't exist, but what they strongly imply is that God, as described by man, is nothing but a figment of the imaginations of primitive and ignorant men who were too oblivious to the concepts of logic to realize that they were creating paradoxes by describing anthropomorphic gods with infinite faculties. And it implies to me that if some god or gods do exist, then he, she, it, or they are nothing like what's described in the storybooks. Thanks for watching, and as always,